Now, one sort of maligned or lost species I feel in amongst the cookery section out there, it's not the cod, it's not the sole, it's not the place, it's not the bass. They're all prime good eating fish. We know that in the restaurants and the prices at those restaurants command. <laughs> Quite frightening actually. But one species that's almost just as good really is the humble whiting. Now, it can be caught virtually anywhere. In a beach, boat situation, different countries have whiting. They have deep water, shallow water. Do you can catch them anywhere? Most anglers sooner or later will come into contact with the whiting. And if they know how to cook them, I think that makes it so much the better. Put back the majority, keep a couple for eating. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So, I'm going to take you fishing for whiting. First, we're going to catch one. We're going to bring it back to the Totally Awesome Kitchen. And I'm going to show you two. That's four gram. No, it's two. It's four. I'm going to show you two ways to cook the whiting. And one of those two, surely, you will find enjoyable. Let's get out on the boat. High Sea Drifter. And the thing is, the whiting aren't difficult to catch. In fact, sometimes it's a job to get away from them. But of course, when you want to catch them and you say, I'm going whiting fishing, it's a whole different ball game. You want to take only the larger ones, there's no need to keep the small ones, they'll be undersized anyway, you can just throw them back, and then when you do get the big ones, you can either take the heads off them straight away, the small ones just throw them back, hopefully catch them next year when they're what I call frying pan size, and the best way to do it as soon as you catch a decent sized one is to get it in the fish box. The main thing with any fish is to get those guts out as quick as you can and whiting if left on a sunny day in the warm sunshine will go off pretty quickly. The guts will be the first to go off and they'll take the rest of the fish. So get it stripped out, get your hands right in there, rip the guts out. It's good fun, it's a good manly sensation of, uh, of removing the intestinal cavity stuff. Get it all out there, strip it all out, you don't want to leave anything in. Of course you can freeze it but I do hope to chill these in the fridge and then cook them fresh. If you do want to freeze these fish, no problem, keep them as individuals. You absolutely have to get all the guts out and then you've got to clean out I call it the spinal cavity, just trim that out as well. Just run your knife along the inside there, uh, pull it right out there. Uh, what's this bit I'm lifting out there? Is it the heart, the lungs, the liver? Or it's probably, I don't know, it's probably the battery that runs them, I don't know. But anyhow, get everything out that's inside there, heave it over the side for the seagulls, job done, and then wash the fish in the salt water. Don't wash it in a marina or anywhere, because there might be some pollutants in there, who knows. Uh, oil floating on the surface and then it's not good for you is it really um, so you've got your white in wash them off keep them in the fresh water and obviously keep them nice and cool during the day so the best thing I find is if you're in the summer if you can take a box with one of those blue ice packs with it that can chill them down if you intend eating them if not put them all back in the sea let them swim away or you can even cover them over in a fish box with a wet towel that will keep them fresh and obviously ready for the kitchen Welcome back to the Totally Awesome Kitchen. Did you see the size of fish that man just caught? You didn't think they were very big, did you? Oh yes, in fact, they were very nice whiting. Indeed, throw the small ones back, just keep a couple back for your own culinary delights. Now then, I'm not gonna bother with vegetables for this because whiting is a real easy, quite a quick fish to cook. And it actually doesn't seem to smell as much as cod uh, and other fish probably they haven't got quite so much oil in them, but you don't get such a fishy smell in the, in the kitchen when you're cooking them, you know, which some people don't like. They always oh, smell. And do you know how to get rid of that, guys? Not with all that perfume stuff that women seem to have. If you cut an onion, a big giant onion, in half and leave that out, allegedly, I believe this is my grandmother probably told me this, it actually gets rid 
of some of the fishy smells. An onion cut in half on a saucer placed up, leave it in there. Try it, what does it cost you? Half an onion. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you two ways here. I'm gonna do a totally awesome double whammy on these whiting. One's gonna be like pan fried fillets, and the other one, I'm gonna bake the fish, but I'm gonna bake the whole fish, like they do, let's say, in Borneo or somewhere. They don't bother trimming and messing around, do they? They eat everything, they make soup, anywhere, anywhere in a country where you're on subsistence level by the farm and you're going to eat everything, not worried about putting a little bit of herb in, paprika, a little bit of this, a bit of that, not bother, you're going to eat fish to survive. So, any of you chefy types out there, possibly might want to move along because I'm cooking fish for fishermen that just want to eat fish, basic way. So I'm going to bake this whole because I believe there's some juices in that head that will actually infuse into the rest of the meat and you can just lift the flakes off. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to line a baking tray with some tin foil. I've got a little bit of water in the bottom of there, just a little bit in there, just keeps it moist, okay? Put the oven on about 350 uh, degrees, preheat it first, and then I'm going to put some little slots, little splits in here, and trickle a little bit of lemon juice in there, and I'm going to bake the fish whole, and I'm going to put a little bit of spice, probably mixed spice, up inside the body cavity. As you saw on the boat, they've all been cleaned, they've all been gutted. So this is going to do the whole one first. Then while that one's doing, it takes a little bit longer, say 20 minutes, 25 minutes, when it's baking to get a baked whiting, I'm going to take the fillets off of this other one and fry it. So first thing, you put the slices into the main part of the whiting body, fill it with some ingredients and get it in there, get it all preheated in the oven, it's ready to go. Okay now, what I'm going to do, we used to have somebody at one of our restaurants and he was a really good chef, he was a Thai chef and he cooked fish like you would believe. I'm not in the same league, but I'm going to put some gentle little cuts just here, just barely stroking it through the meat. Okay, until I, I can just feel, it's a very sharp knife, might not look it, I can just feel the backbone, I'm not cutting through it. Just going to cut it down gently like this. Now you can put very slim, slim wedges of um, lemon if you want. Now, what I'm going to do, just going back to this Thai chef we used to, uh, used to have with us, he's really, really good. I'm going to put some of this, it's called Thai Seven Spice. I'm just going to put a little bit, shake it in that body cavity there. And just leave it closed up like that. That's all I'm going to do with that. I can smell it already. It reminds me of his cooking, which was nothing short of miraculous. And then, so simple this one, into those cracks here, the splits, just put a little bit of drizzled lemon juice. Now I just smear it on the outside like this as well. Going to run in, going to run out, who cares? This is for eating, not for displaying the uh, Tate Gallery. Just like that, okay. Leave it like that. I'm going to place it in the baking dish. Like this. It's in the baking dish. And then a little bit of salt and pepper, which I've neglected to leave out, but is here. Just along the outside. Always seems strange, really, doesn't it? You put you put salt on a fish that's come out of a salt water environment, but it doesn't actually help it to uh, give a bit of extra taste. And the same on the other side. Throwing some of that pepper in there and a little bit of salt on that side. Now, how easy is this, people? I just, I think it's got the water underneath to help keep the moisture. You just seal it up in a little packet. And I'm holding it, I'm not crushing it down there. I want it almost to sort of, you're baking it, but it's a sort of steaming effect. Okay, so that's folded up into a little parcel, but loosely tagged. Sweet and simple. You see the water swirling around there in the bottom. It's going to keep it moist. Into the oven it goes, it's preheated. And when the little light goes out in the oven, I'm going to pop it in there, in the middle, for about 20, 25 minutes. In the meantime, I can show you how to fill it, the white in for pan fried whiting. Okay, here is our gargantuan whiting. Just gonna take, fill it off here. Again, very sharp life, just behind that pectoral fin. And just get it lightly till you, till you feel the actual backbone there. Using a broad bladed knife, and I'm just gonna ease it and stroke it. You can actually feel it sort of, look, no, I'm not great at filleting. I fill it to get meat off the bone, end of story. You should see a professional. We actually watched a professional once. We were on a trip to British Columbia salmon fishing and he just went bosh, 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 bosh. And it was done, it was boneless, it was immaculate. But the guy did it for a living. 
But if you just run the knife slowly, very slowly, you can actually feel it bump across the tip of, you know, the bones with the tip of the knife. And if you've got the tip there sharp, that does help. And you're not sort of sawing, you're just easing that meat away. And the bulk of the meat, don't forget, is going to be from there to the, to the spine. The rest is going to be towards the body cavity. This one is coming off a treat. Now, that's ready to go. I can split there. A little tip here, because I always have trouble getting the second fillet off. So somebody told me, Graham, leave that original fillet on, and it gives you some body cavity support there, so you can cut in the opposite direction. I have sharpened this knife so much, I must actually remember to tell the, uh, tell the wife about it. Otherwise, she'll be peeling potatoes, and unfortunately, she won't be playing the piano again. It's a very sharp knife. So just ease that away again, just just feeling it bump. You know, along here is always difficult. You've got to come the opposite direction now. Push the knife away, that's the way I do it. Pick up that meat, just bump it gently along. You can see the bones there, they're in there. Just bump it gently along there and away from the body cavity. Always take your time, fill it in. It pays off dividends in the end. And you'll have all 10 digits remaining well hopefully anyway right so now that fill it on the other side that's helped me keep that body cavity intact now i can take off the surplus that i don't want and trim it okay just whiz that off there now if you watch the other side i turn it round there's the fillet look all i've got to do is nick off a little surplus here so if i turn it round, you'll be able to see it better there's the meat and just whiz that off there the carcass goes to my freezer, ready for the next sharp fishing trip. Now, I'm going to trim that edge there, body cavity. There's not a great deal of meat on it, just like this. Move that over, same here. Just take, see the fins and that? And obviously professionals do it professionally. This is a fisherman doing it for fishermen, because there's nothing better than going out in your own boat, catching your own fish and then eating it. Now, I think we've shown in the video before, should you want to remove that skin, you just cut in here and you just work the blade along. Look at our other one on, uh, on COD, and Wayne Common, uh, you know, does some cooking for us, he, he'll show you, I'm sure in one of the films it's there. I'm going to leave the skin on, because we're whiting, it's a very light, flaky, delicate texture, and it does tend to break up, that's the only thing. If you leave that skin on, and you crisp it, some people actually, well there's some eggs like eating skin as well, but it helps hold it all together when you turn it in the frying pan. Now, onto the seasoning, again, not rocket science. Well now, don't anybody tell me, you must do it this way, you must do it that way. Fish is for eating. You put on it what you want. You can put what flavourings, what spices, what herbs you want, whichever you fancy. Let's face it, everybody's different out there. Everybody, some people like hot curry, you know, just warm, mild. And some people like sweet, some people like savoury. Everybody's taste is different. What I'm going to do with this one is, on first, I'm going to put my lemon juice on first to give it a little bit of moisture and then a little bit of ginger, okay, a little bit of garlic and then salt and pepper, but that will stick, that, that lemon juice will just give that skinless side, the inside of the fillet, a little bit of moisture so then I can flour it afterwards so it doesn't stick to the frying pan and that will seal it all in nicely and it's just a hint, just a hint of those tastes is what we're looking for. Get the frying pan heated up and we'll crack on. Right, there we go, we've got the fillets. The first thing we're going to do is just give it a little drizzle of lemon juice like this. You can squeeze a whole lemon over it, like this, but just rub it in, and this is on the uh, opposite side to the skin. I see no point in seasoning the skin. You see the ins inside of the fillet. Now, that gives you enough moisture just to put a little hint of your, whatever you want to put on there, put on there. But what I find is rather than shake it out over the fish and get too much, because, you know, you don't know really how much you're going to shoot out of these holes in the end. You can just put it in your hand first and then you can just sprinkle along like this, what you want, you get it evenly. Just a, just a little hint like that, do some on the other side. This is just a little bit of ginger. Now of course, whiting being a delicate fish is very nice, just cooked straight in butter with salt and pepper. There we go. The same goes with the garlic. I just find shaking it in my hand, just want a little bit there, because there are only two fillets. 
just sprinkle that along over the top again it's going to stick to that lemon juice on the inside a little bit of garlic the rest is going to have to go there I don't want to overkill it and then stab that in there I like to get it in there make sure it's absolutely absolutely on just get yourself a little bit of flour over the top don't forget the spices are underneath just like that pat it all down Wipes out so you can't see the mess I'm making of her uh, counter and doesn't hurt just to put it on the skin at the back as well it stops it all stick into the pan shake off the surplus and those two are ready for the frying pan right oven's up to speed middle of the oven in goes our baked fish all sealed up in a little foil sleeping bag I call it a foil sleeping bag that's in there and we'll crack on and get this frying pan fired up to get the pan fried whiting on the go okay we've got the uh, pan up to speed here's our fillets going in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in skin side first there we go and get that crinkle cut flavour just rinse them around in it a little bit and like all fish once they're in there and they've got a bit of oil coating on that skin just let them basically cook themselves do not disturb you need one of those sides hanging on the outside of the pan when you cook fish do not disturb and I wonder what it's like for pushing and poking away you think you're going to improve it don't you no you just destroy it man I can smell that little bit of ginger coming through there and I don't know whether whether it's the fisherman in us, the hunter in us, the caveman in us, but I think all men really like to hear that sort of sizzling sound because it really does tell you you've, you've been out, you're going to put food on the table that day. I mean, okay, these two fillets of whiting have probably cost me about 80 pounds in fuel in the car, fuel in the boat, bait, travelling time, etc. And they're sort of an 80 pound fish meal I'm making here, but listen, guys, at the end of the day, I can at least get out, catch a few fish, as long as the petrol supplies last, of course, and my boat runs. And there's nothing more satisfying than getting in there and catching these fish and putting them in the pan and eating them. Now, just remember, whiting is a delicate fish. It is going to cook quite quickly. You can deep fry them. You can have it hotter if you wanted. You can have more oil if you wanted. I'm just shallow frying these because they're quite thin fillets. They're probably only going to take, oh, I guess three minutes each side to do. Doing the skin side first. Mm, that smells nice. Now the last time I did this, I got the, I put the, I put the gas on quite high one. You know, you have different burners on these, uh, these range master grills. You get different sized burners, and I put in quite a big one. I think it was the Watt one. And all of a sudden, the next thing I know, blue smoke everywhere. I went over there to tidy up. Not a good idea. Now, just delicately turn these over. They had three minutes on the skin side. I want to do the meat side now. I find it's best to support them with like a spatula and a pair of tongs as well. Now look, if you turn it over, you can see that skin being left on there has ensured all the meat there, all the meat there is in one piece, which is nice. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't bother me if it's flaky. I don't do presentation. I do food, if you like, for survival. If you're going to eat these, look at me. Look at me poking them. Isn't it really naughty? I can't help it. You want to push them into more fat drain it, make them cook better. Graham, leave it alone, let them cook. Another oh, three minutes outside and they're going to be done. Now the reason I didn't mention vegetables is you can sort of make your own up. You know, everybody knows how to cook vegetables, what they should do. I'd suggest with this fried whiting fillets like they just pan the skin on, maybe something like a nice rice, just a nice rice, that's all you need. That's it, you know, maybe some tartar sauce over the top of the uh, fish, that's it, finished. With the, with the baked fish, the whole fish, you, when you eat it, you can tease the skin away, you'll see that it's going to break up in there in that foil. It's going to be more moist, so I would suggest something like vegetables, new potatoes, anything you wanted, some broccoli, some peas, some veg, some beans, fresh beans back with it. So, make your own up, whatever you guys like. I'm not cooking mine with Brussels sprouts, for sure. 
but just choose your own vegetables and enjoy what you cook with your vegetables. Don't touch it, Graham. So desperate to do something, I don't know what. That's it, I've moved them. That's it, I'll just like that. Sizzling down a while, about a minute. A minute left. I've preheated the plates because fish does tend to go cold quickly and get those straight plated out and I've actually got a tester here. What you would call testament. Testament to my cooking and culinary skills in the shape of my daughter who is going to give you a little taste test on there and see what she thinks. So you can see the skin there has held that meat together perfectly. I'm going to flip it over because it always looks better look. The fish side beautiful and golden and I think that ginger comes out in there as well. And look, it just absolutely falls apart. So Charlotte, my daughter, is going to be the first to taste this. So tell us what you think of that then, Charlie. Mm, very nice. Tastes just like fish and chips. Well, there's no chips with it, but it's almost, it should be better than the fish and chips that you get down the shop, shouldn't it? It's fresh. Mm -hmm. And a little bit, can you taste any ginger in there? A little bit. Just enough? Yeah. That's good. Well, I think I'll go on with the second one. Okay, as Charlotte has approved the fried version, let's take a look at the baked whole fish. Again, wash your fingers, it is going to be hot. Now, this is a whole fish. Oh, look, absolutely, absolutely broken up beautifully. I can still see a hint of the spices coming out around there, and those splits help all that to break apart and yet you can see the steam coming off so you know that water in there has effectively sort of it's baked but it's sort of steamed it as well and that should be nice and moist let's get it on the plate and that might be more difficult than it appears drain that surplus off that's the other thing you make a little tunnel at the end look watch and you can strain all that off make good fish stock there and we'll go into a tent to get it on that plate in one go. Try and tease this fish off. It's so well, it's cooked to perfection. It is on the verge of collapsing. Look at that. Now, what you can do, guys, is you can just cut that head straight off. But for presentation, do you know what I mean? People sometimes leave the, leave the head on there. I just think the juices all come out in the head and in this flaky meat. And it, it just helps, it just gives it that extra bit of flavour. As I say, if you go, if you went out in the jungle somewhere, they make soup out of the head, so why would you want to waste it? It gives added flavour. Okay, here we go, here we go, guys. There, yeah, does that look nice? And it is still, if you can see that in the lens there, still steaming, which is why I use hot plates. This one's cooled off a bit there. So there you have it. You've got baked whiting, or you've got fried, pan fried fillets of whiting. The choice is yours, whatever vegetables you want. Enjoy the fish you catch. Enjoy going out fishing for them. And of course, for me, I've got to get out there and catch some more fish now. Oh, what a tough life it is. Enjoy. <laughs>